viewers, if you click the video link, you're here to listen to me talk about dark traps and explain to you what they are and some best case use scenarios for them. So this big red box that you see in front of you that takes up a one by one square space is a dark trap. There are a couple of ways that you can get your hands on dark traps. Probably the most simplest one is simply buying it from the trader. You also have the uh, opportunity to get them as rewards or in a supply drop. You'll see this dark trap bundle here. You'll open it up and typically it will have some dark traps in it. It'll have darts. This one, this one in particular has some switches and some extra electrical trap books, which is the other way that you get your hands on these things. So if we go to our crafting skill books and we go to traps, if we look here in this first section, we have electric fences, darts, and blade traps. They require skill level 25. So you have to read those books that you find through looting in order to actually be able to craft them yourself. There are no schematics anymore where you simply find a dart trap schematic and you automatically know how to make it. So let's go ahead and read some of these. All right, so you see once we hit level 25, we've got that little prompt that shows up there. We go down to traps here. And then this is all checked off. So we've learned how to unlock all three of those at the same time. So we can now make electric fences, dart traps, and blade traps. But we are just here to talk about dart traps. So let's see what we need to craft them. So first of all, you can see this little symbol here means that you need a workbench. So you cannot just do this in your inventory. And you can see here what the required materials are. Now, if we look at our skills here, I have given myself the points to max out intellect. But if we go down here to advanced engineering, you can see that it says you start getting XP from electric trap kills. But as we start going further down, you'll see that it says at the bottom here, all electrical devices cost 35% less. So let's put some points into here and see what those uh, numbers actually go down to. So starting at level three here, electrical devices cost 15% less. So let's go ahead and put a point into that. And then we are going to go back to our crafting menu to look at the dark traps. and We can see what we're at. All right, so then we go back to advanced engineering. We put another point in here. And then at max level advanced engineering, you'll see how much it costs there. All right. So now you've got this thing built. You're going to place it down. How do we use it? What do we do with it? So. I've got a couple of things going on here. First of all, you're gonna need some sort of power source, so generator bank, battery bank. I usually use some sort of switch or something to activate my individual circuits. And I like to put down signs just to label my switches so I know what they are. So if a horde's here, something's going wrong and I'm scrambling, I don't panic and start flipping the wrong things on or off. So if I hit E while interacting with this thing, it's gonna open up. You don't have a whole lot of options with this. You have an option to unlock and lock ammo. So again, you put these darts in there. It only holds three stacks of 500 as a max. You cannot put any more than that. You cannot put any ammunition. These specific darts are ammunition just for the dart trap. If you're having issues with it, you've got everything wired. You know you did it right. Come back here and check this and make sure you lock it. If this is not locked, it will not operate. So what does it do once it becomes operational? Well, let's go ahead and turn this on. So we have power, our switch is off, so it's not doing anything. As soon as I turn this switch on, it's gonna start firing those darts. You do not have to use a switch. You have all kinds of different options in this game. I prefer just uh, using that on my circuit. And then what I'll do is I'll have that switch run to either a pressure plate. You got a bigger pressure plate. You got motion sensors. You got trip wires. Whatever uh, sensors you happen to be wanting to use to activate your dart traps. That will go ahead and start setting it off. So I'm just going to manually do this just so you can see it. You can hear it running. And it just starts launching darts in a straight line. So I have these numbers here so you can see how many blocks it actually travels. So we're just going to run all the way down to the end here. And it goes 27 blocks before you can see there's 26. And at 27, it starts hitting the ground. So if I stand on block 28, I am safe. This thing will hurt you if you walk into it and you get hit by your darts. So you can see I was taking some damage there. And this thing will just keep firing until it runs out of darts. Or, again, you manually turn it off or whatever uh, sensor or means that you have it running by and telling it to activate are means such as a pressure plate, motion sensor, tripwire. The parameters that you have on there uh, basically tell it to shut off and stop going. So, let's... So, I've got kind of a mock-up here of 
a horde base fighting position. I have a bunch of different things set up just to kind of give you an idea or things that you can do to implement dark traps in your base. My uh, number one thing that I like to do, I like to have an elevated position with a walkway that kind of curves and make them and makes them have to wiggle and move around just a little bit. You can see in front of you, I've got a slit there and I'll show you in a second what I have going on. I like to use railing blocks because the dart traps can shoot through it and it gives the zombies a little bit of a uh, barrier. They have to stop and think about what they want to do. Maybe they stop and punch it a couple times. They've got to jump over it and all the while they're being subjected to my dart traps that are here. These are arrow slit blocks. I have some here as well. You can see they're kind of a weird uh, angled shape, but the dart traps are able to shoot through them. So this is, I have this broken off just so it's kind of like a cutaway and you can see again some options that uh, you could use in your base. So with this particular one right here at the bottom, again, I have an arrow slit facing up with the dart trap pointing straight up in the air. So any zombies that are at my fighting position are getting hit. This method is very nice to use simply because you only need one dart trap and you can hit everything. And by that, I mean crawlers, dogs, things that uh, it doesn't matter how tall they are, basically, because if we look at this one, we've got two of them stacked on top of each other. And the same thing right here with them shooting through that arrow slit as zombies are coming down this walkway. So if there's a crawler and I only have one up here, they're down here below the level of the top dart trap. They're not going to get hit or a dog comes running up. They're not going to get hit by that. So this is here to get the dogs and crawlers to be hit. And this one will help hit the zombies in their uh, chest and head region. Having both of them stacked like that will deal more damage, however, so the zombies should die a little bit quicker. Again, if you're slim on resources, you just want to throw one of these on here. This is a good option to have. So again, while they're standing here trying to get to you with your uh, fighting position, they're being shot no matter how tall they are, what the uh, creature is that you're fighting. Another option, you can put it up above as well as to the side. Now, I would not recommend having them this close. If you do decide to go that route, I would push them a little bit further away. That way, if the uh, zombies fall off here, whatever, they get bored, they start piling up. It's less likely that they are going to hit your blocks. And then again, once that block is destroyed, they'll have access to hit your dart traps. So we don't want that to happen. If a cop or a demolisher blows up here, we don't want your traps failing. So the further away they are, remember you have 27 blocks worth of space. So you could put those things way over here shooting at them and you would be fine. You just have to be able to reach it with the wires, whatever sensor it is that you're using to activate it. I have this one set up here. This is something I've done several times in my horde base. Usually you'll have a hatch down here, but I put a railing block there and a hatch there so that I could uh, jump in and out of my base. I'm in my fighting position, the horde's here. My weapon breaks, I need to reload. I've got to take a learning elixir or a recall, whatever the, uh, the lull in the action, I've got to answer a text message. Somebody comes in to talk to me, but I'm still fighting the horde. What I've done is I will set these up pointing at my fighting position and I wire them to a trigger plate that is at least one gap from where my fighting position is. So when I stand on it, this thing will start firing. As I get off of it, it will stop and I can get back to fighting again. I repaired my weapon, took a recog, whatever. Whatever it is that you needed to uh, do, taking a lull in the combat there. And again, something happens. If you put it right here, there's a chance as you're transitioning between the plate and your fighting position that you're going to get shot in the back because, again, they will damage you. So I put it at least one space away, stand on it, and again, do my uh, do my thing. Now, something to keep in mind, the darts that come out of this will hurt you, but they will not hurt other blocks. So if I was to just put this pointing at a wall and I let it shoot all 1,500 darts, it wouldn't damage the block one bit. But again, it will damage uh, anything else organic that it is shooting at. Now... With the arrow slits, you will notice I cannot reach through here to do anything. So there are a couple blocks that if you do need to protect them or you, again, you don't want to use the uh, arrow slit. I just did that for there because if I put a railing block, it looks kind of weird, that huge gap underneath it, but whatever uh, floats your boat. So this is a railing block. And as you can see, as I'm looking at the front of the dart trap, I am able to access it. This is a scaffolding ladder block. I can also reach through it. And these are bars. Uh, as you notice, I cannot reach through. I'm not getting a prompt. It's really weird. I can reach over the top of it, but I cannot reach through it. So again, if you're doing something like that in your fighting position, railing blocks are always an option because it'll make it a little bit easier to wire them in. Any other blocks that have kind of holes in them, you can reach through. So you can see like this big uh, cube with the circle hole through it. I can reach through and access it just fine. 
So if something happens and you are in need of moving your horde base, you want to pick your traps up, you don't want to destroy anything. As of right now, the only option I have to interact with is uh, just opening it. However, you'll notice if I put a land claim block down here and I come over to one of my traps, if I hold E while I'm looking at it, it comes up with extra options now. And those options, this one basically just goes into the same menu we've already seen, and this one allows you to take it. So I just highlight over with my mouse. I'm going to let go of E. We're going to get a little bit of a countdown, and then it's going to be picked up and placed in our inventory. So that way, again, if you're moving your horde base or you accidentally put it somewhere you didn't mean to or you need to get something behind it, whatever, wherever you placed it, it uh, you have that option. Now, when you go to place it, if you're confused about uh, which way it's going to be shooting, there is a nice handy green arrow that will show you as well as you can see the holes where the uh, darts shoot out of. So you'll just left click to spin it around. And then once you're happy with the placement, right click. In terms of wiring them in, so I go from my power source. And in this case, I'm gonna use a motion sensor. Click on that because I'm sending the power to this to decide when to send power to the dart trap. So then now I need to click on that and here. So yes, I'm using God mode, I'm flying around. So make sure when you're uh, planning out your horde base, you give yourself the ability to actually get to the stuff to wire it. Again, railing blocks are very handy for that. Now, so in this particular instance, again, I've got my motion sensor. You can see the cone of where it's looking at right down the walkway where the zombies are coming. And what I will do is I will go into here. I have it set for strangers and zombies. There should never be any strangers in my games. I don't have... Uh, access to the public on and I turn off self and allies because I don't want this thing shooting at me while I'm coming up power delay I want on instant so basically the second it sees a zombie within its cone of visual range I want it to start shooting and then I want it to continue to shoot for anywhere usually between three and five seconds after the last zombie or stranger is spotted and the reason for that is because if the zombies come up here they're getting shot and they die you can have it shut off instantly, but then it's going to have to wait until the next zombie comes up. And depending on how long your walkway is, they may be back here out of the range of it. And if it's still shooting for three to five seconds, they're still getting hit back here. Because especially on a horde night, you know the zombies are just going to keep coming. So there's always going to be more behind them. So that way, if there is a lull, there's, a, you know, spawns, a bunch of them fell off. They can't figure out their way to get around. It'll shut off and not waste your darts. And then you're only losing three to five seconds, uh... In between it seeing zombies so that's usually how i like to set it up you're welcome to use a tripwire and have it do a similar thing but i would recommend again putting the tripwires far enough away that if the darts let's say piss off a cop and doesn't kill him and he explodes it doesn't blow up your sensor that's over here because then it, your dart traps are going to be uh, basically not working and you're going to have to figure out another way to scramble and wire them in or uh, just get it set up for the next horde also as an added note Dart traps will not set off Demolisher's buttons. I have tested this numerous times and I have yet in any situation to actually have them get hit and detonate. So anyway, this is just a uh, quick video. Again, some options, how to use the dart traps, what they are, how they work. If you have any questions or you feel like I didn't cover anything that you would have liked to know about these devices, please leave a comment down below and I will be glad to get back to you. Or if it requires a more detailed uh, answer, I'll be glad to make a follow-up video for you. So with that, thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next video.